Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carl Holman, Communications Manager at AMD Mortgage. Uh, welcoming you all to today's DSCR webinar with Mark Glazer. Um, we'll go ahead and get started here in just a few minutes, let people roll in. In the meantime, we'll just kind of review sort of our etiquette and our agenda. So next slide, please. Okay, so very quickly, we disable cameras and microphones so that we can have your full attention. Um, if you guys have any questions during the course of the webinar, just go ahead and use either the Q&A or the chat function. Um, we are recording this, so we can eliminate the first question, which is, are you recording this? Um, and then um, we would just ask you guys if you could mute your cell phones for now. Uh, that way you can give Mark your full attention to the content that we're going to give you guys, because we put a lot of time and effort into it. So hopefully you guys will find some good value on it. Um, all right, and let me go ahead and introduce first Mark Glazer, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the company. Um, Mark is our wholesale team manager for AMD Mortgage for the East Coast. Uh, he's been with us for a few years, and he's been in the industry for a, a few <laughs> decades. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he he's he's worked in the, the DSR investment loan portfolio community for a while, so uh, he he kind of knows what he's talking about. He's one of our top producers. Um, let's go to the next slide real quick. Uh, so for people who are new to who A and D Mortgage is, we are one of the top lenders in the country. Uh, I believe we're number four now in the wholesale space. Um, we are based in. South Florida. We've been around for just about 20 years. Um, again, top top non-QM lender. We are also uh, highly competitive in the conventional and government space, um, and we'll be getting even more competitive in the upcoming year. Um, we are both an originator and a securitizer of our mortgages uh, with the assistance of a company called Imperial Fund. They're a sister partner who helps us securitize our loans on the corporate market, sorry, on the corporate market, on the capital market. Um, and because of that, it allows us to be our own underwriter and uh, write our own guidelines when it comes to non-QM loans. And it gives us a lot of flexibility. Um, in terms of where we lend, um, Next slide. Um, we are pretty much at this point nationwide. We just are missing a few state licenses. We've recently expanded over the last few weeks into uh, the middle section, Oklahoma, Iowa. And then we did Maine and Montana most recently. I believe it was even last week. Um, and we are a um, full, what is a fully licensed Fannie and Freddie service or seller in the conventional space. Um, again, for those people who are maybe accustomed to working in conventional and not familiar with non-QM products. Um, I think one of the other important things is that you're not required to have a business license, or excuse me, a license in 40 of the states if you wanna do business purpose loans with us. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Glazer. And he will tell us about DSCR loans. Go ahead, Mark. Okay. Take well, it away. Good afternoon, every, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to AD Mortgage. Uh, this is the DSCR Thursday. We're going to talk about debt service coverage ratio loans. So a debt service coverage ratio loan is predicated on the rent of the property versus a borrower's income. So when one would do such a loan, there's no income, no employment, no employer. We are just... Uh, worried about whether or not the property is an investment property and whether or not it is rentable, has to be rentable, and that debt service coverage can be applied to it. Uh, that's pretty much what we would have for a debt service coverage loan. Continuing on. Now, there's several ways uh, we do debt service coverage loans. We either have one that doesn't even require the debt service or when it does, we look at 100% of long-term rent, or we look at 75% of short-term rent, and then we then apply it over the PITI HOA of the property. So, and then that will give us our debt service coverage as seen in this slide. Continuing on. So 
when you're having a debt service equal to one, generally that's where uh, the rent equals PITI HOA, the mortgage, principal interest, taxes, insurance, and any HOA dues. When you have a DSCR equaling to one, generally on a single family home, we're able to go up to 80 LTV. When you have a debt service under one, generally down to perhaps 0.75, we're able to do 75% loan to values. And that's where there's a little bit of a higher risk since the uh, rent is less than the, uh, the rent is less than the mortgage, but down to 0. 0.75, we could do 7.75, uh, 75 loan to value. Uh, as far as ideal debt services, Right now, the ideal debt service would be 1.1, but with the flexibility of AD mortgage, if it's less than one, we could go down to we could go down to 75% loan to value. If it's less than 0.75 debt service, we go down to 70, and then we actually have a situation where there's no debt service required. Continuing on. So how is all of this determined? So when a loan is submitted to AD Mortgage, uh, it comes in generally as a long-term rent schedule property in the DSCR window. Now, after it's submitted, we have the opportunity of looking at it with a AirDNA possibility uh, for to see if a short-term rent could be applied to it. If not, we request a 1007 rent schedule to be done with your appraisal when it's ordered. Up to a million dollars, we only require three months reserves and cash out to 70%, depending upon the properties. If a borrower has 20% their own money sourced and seasoned in a debt service loan, then we allow gifts. As long as the borrower could demonstrate 20% of their own money, we, we permit gifts. Continuing on, when doing a uh, loan application, we require no income, no employment, no employer on the 1003. And in cases of vacant properties, uh, we don't even require any leases. The property could be vacant and we'll go strictly off the 1007 rent schedule uh, in order to do that. And then at the various loan to values, 80 equals 1.0 debt service, 75 down to 0.75 or 70 with no debt service required. So what is good for our uh, debt service programs? Well, here's the situation. A borrower could currently own their home and have never had an investment property and would qualify for our debt service loan. A borrower can have owned a piece of real estate in the last 24 months and be renting and still qualify to uh, do a debt service loan. Or a borrower could own property outside of the United States as long as we have proof of ownership of a property outside the U.S. and be currently renting and could do a debt service loan. So we cover first time and we cover all the, the types of borrowers. So where is it good to purport a debt service loan? Well, understand the different markets that we work in. So my understanding and what I like to see debt service loans is you could walk into real estate offices and explain to them that in an investor loan, you go to, to a realtor and say, hey, look, I could do a no income, no employment, no employer loan, up to 80% loan to value on an investment property. And if they put 30% down, imagine going to a realtor and explaining to them that we don't even have to debt service with 30% down a 70% loan to value. Uh, once again, the analytics of calculating the debt services, either we use the 1007 rent schedule, or if you're doing multifamily, it's the multifamily appraisal that has it on there for the analytics, or if it, you bring the loan in and we run our internal air DNA, you may not even need a 1007 rent schedule at all if you hit 1.0 on my air DNA internal calculator. Continuing on. 
Okay. So as far as the trends and understanding the debt services, you are tuned into AD Mortgage. And with AD Mortgage, you're going to be given on our website these tools to let you know what the DSCR can do and cannot do. We have flyers available for you to offer to your realtors to let them know how all that works. And then if you're looking to price, you could use our quick pricer and you could find out all the avenues for the DSCR loan, whether it's long-term or short-term, by leveraging our technology to let you know all of the, uh, the pricing for the loan. And of course, if it works, you sign in to the broker portal and you can enter your loan. Okay, so uh, what are we looking at here? Back to the relationships. Once again, debt service is a great door opener at your realtor. Also, having a debt service loan or any kind of investor business purpose loan, if you're practicing, let's say here in South Florida, New York, California, wherever you are, and right now, if business is a little slow, check out the 40 states that have available for you to do business purpose investor loans. And you're able to perhaps advertise on uh, on any of the various platforms from Facebook to all the other platforms that you may advertise on. And then you could solicit in these 40 states and do investor business purpose loans, again, investor loans with AD Mortgage, whether you're licensed in that state or not. <clears throat> Continue on. Cool. So what we're basically giving you as an overview, when you bring in a borrower or speak to your realtors, you know, you need to be right up front with them and tell them uh, what the products that you have. You want to also go over that you have the market knowledge. Let's say if they are trying to do a DSCR property, uh, you want to know that you're able to give them the understanding that you know about the different properties in the area, whether it's a condo hotel, which we do, whether it's three, you know, fourplex, five to eight units, we do, condos, single family homes. You could let them know that you have the ability to do all the various types of properties, everywhere from one to eight units, condos condo hotels, single families, and so on. Making sure that you let your realtors know that you have the ability to do these things. And then the network piece I was saying before, you know, if you have an Instagram account, Facebook account, let the world know and realtors know throughout the country and especially in the 40 states that you have the ability to do these loans. No income, no employment, no employer on the 1003 and if you can leverage the this type of a loan into a real estate office you've never been to, you're going to create a really good long-term relationship with that realtor because all it takes to do is one or two loans they didn't think they could do, and they're yours for life. And next slide. So we're giving you the scenarios that I had mentioned earlier. So at an 80% loan to value, your debt service would need to equal one. Again, once again, the P-I-T-I-H-O-A of the uh, property compared to the rent. We count 100% of the 1007 rent schedule, and we count 75% if short-term rent is applied. Scenario two. So at 75% LTV, we could go down to 0.75 debt service. So it's 99 down to 0.75. So you have that ability as well. Now, when you're looking at such a such a, uh, a situation where you're at 70% loan to value, debt service doesn't matter. You still need to order the 1007 rent schedule. You still need to or to run our internal air DNA, but if it's at 70% loan to value, it goes down to zero. This example shows you a typical condominium situation. But again, at 70%, you need to have a 680 credit score and it could go down to zero. Continuing on. So we're gonna open up for questions. 
from anybody in the group if they have any uh, interest uh, to ask questions at this time. We yeah, so we've, to... we've got a couple already, Mark. Um, uh, one from Scott. I will go through the map and answer that for you separately. We don't have an immediate list of the 10 states um, uh, for the business purpose loans. Do you know it off the top of your head, Mark? No, but here's what you can do. Uh, after the call, if you email me, I could forward you the rate sheet for AD Mortgage. And on there, we'll list the states that we can do business purpose loans. It would be under, when you go to the rate sheet, you go to, let's say, DSCR or Super Prime, scroll down to the mid part of the page, and it will give you the states where licenses are not required. Okay. Um, somebody lost sound. Does, does the DSCR program include living assisted homes? Uh, it does not. Okay. Uh, if someone is renting now, uh, can he still qualify if he's owned a property in the last 24 months? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Uh, is the DSR for one to four units only? All properties, condos, single families, condo tells, five to eight units. Okay. A uh, question about foreign nationals. We didn't cover the foreign national DSCR, but we do have that. You want to talk about that really quick? Sure. So this DSCR program is available for foreign nationals. What we do is we verify their home ownership abroad. But if they've owned a piece of real estate in the U.S., then we could verify that they're renting abroad or living with family and they own a piece of real estate currently or have owned a piece of real estate in the last 24 months. At 70% loan to value, we do foreign nationals in all the types of properties, and we will do them as a debt service loan. Again, having owned a piece of real estate in the last 24 months anywhere in the world, or currently owning a piece of real estate, you can qualify for this program. So if they've owned a piece of real estate in the last 24 months, they just need to show proof. Um, so foreign nationals allowed with no social security number. Uh, Correct. That's your typical foreign national. You'll pull your credit anyway with all nines for the social, but it is not required. If they have no credit whatsoever showing up, we'll just need a bank reference letter for two years personally that just says they have a bank account and a CPA letter to say they have home ownership or if they've owned a piece of real estate in the last 24 months, uh, the CPA letter would validate that. They could say it and that they had sold whatever 12 months ago. It could be detailed to cover it. Okay. Uh, can you use this for mixed use properties? Uh, yes, we can. That's that's what we use for mixed use properties is the debt service loan. Okay. Um, minimum loan amount. 100000 and now we've introduced our ITIN program, and DSCR is available on ITIN. Okay, great. Uh, so what are, you got any seasoning requirements? Seasonings requirements are on a case-by-case -case basis. So depending on when they purchase the property, you'll go over that with your account executive, and then we could decide how to go from there. Great. Um, okay, so the borrower cannot do the DSCR if they do not if they have not owned real estate within 24 months, that's correct. Uh, no, we do, we do have exceptions, but uh, it is very, very case by case. Okay. Uh, any vacancy factors? We do not. So a debt service loan, unless you're using an air DNA or short-term rental, that's where we do 75%. Otherwise, that's only in the case of the short-term rent circumstance, mostly are long-term, and we use 100% of the 1007 rent schedule or 100% of the lease, providing it's not 25% more than the 1007 rent schedule. Um, Scott, I just sent you an answer for the question. This is the states that you do not need a business license in, so you can work backwards to get to the 10. Um, da, 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 so the bar. Da, 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 I'm sorry, I'm on the answer. Questions. Valid visa. Yes, yeah, you valid do need visa. a valid. Right, you need a valid visa unless you're from an ESTA country. Then you need ESTA registration. Unless you're from Canada, where you don't need anything other than a Canadian passport. Okay. Uh, there's a question about the marketing materials. So we do have a learning center 
on our website. It's admortgage.com dash studio. And I'll so we'll include that link to for everyone um, in the follow-up email. But we do have um, both DSCR flyers and various social media and email headers for it. Um, if you need it customized, uh, there's a button where you can just click need to customize and send in your information, upload your picture and photo, and we can take care of it from there. So you don't need access credentials. Um, it's just straight open on the website. Um, we did used to have a, a center where you had to do that, but we found it, it kind of limited people's usage of it. Um, so we'll send that out with everyone. Uh, but the, the, the ALF that they were referring to, you could perhaps do that on our hard money. Okay. Uh, but not again, on the basic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, on the so on the assisted living facilities on the slide with the current trends, we were talking very broadly in terms of trends that are happening in DSCR. It's not always specific to the things that we ourselves do, but so we aren't doing assisted living facilities, but there are folks who do in case um, you do have right. that. Um, can, okay. you can you refinance a commercial property? With we don't we yeah. currently do not do commercial properties but we do mixed use whereby if there's let's say two of the units downstairs are offices and two of the units upstairs are residential that's considered mixed use that we do okay um for the eight units what's our minimum ltv uh we have to check it's case by case versus the uh the credit scores okay a lot of good questions <clears throat> Keep the questions coming, guys. Uh, can you do lender paid or borrower paid? I usually recommend borrower paid for the best pricing because if you do lender paid, you you have to charge what your maximum lender paid is. So in non-QM loans, I usually recommend the borrower paid scenario. Okay. Uh, if uh, would a lease agreement with a higher rental monthly value trump any result from a 1003, sorry, 1007. Um, so the example is she's got a client who's leased a property getting 1500 a month. But what if the 1007 gives a 1300 a month average result? As long as that calculation does not exceed 25% over the 1007 rent schedule, we could do 1500. You have okay. to do the calculation. Okay. How about Airbnb? <clears throat> so Airbnb is just what a borrower or a potential or a uh, seller does with their property. We don't label a property as an Airbnb. So if a, if a loan comes from a single family home or a condominium, and if they've been doing Airbnb with the same company for 12 months, you have an opportunity to look at a 12 month consistent schedule. If the property has not been done on a 12 month consistent schedule, then it doesn't matter if it's Airbnb. We would consider the long-term rent schedule, or we would run our internal air DNA and see if you're going to get your 1.0 debt ratio versus to the, uh, to the current property to see if it meets the mortgage to the rent using our air DNA, unless there's a 12 month consistency with one rent get with one rent company, like an Airbnb, uh, then we would consider using that. But you need to speak to your account executive before you submit to see how that comes out. Okay. Yeah, and Ben Ben makes a good point that most lenders use the lesser of the 1007 versus the lease agreement. So the fact that we are able to do that is, again, another distinguishing yeah. strength that we bring to the table. Uh, it's an advantage of, for you guys right. if you partner, if you're not already a partner with us. Um, I th let's give it another Anybody minute. Else? Yeah, let's give a couple more minutes for questions. Um, if not, well, I'll jump over into the little wrap up real quick. Oh, for nationals, do we use a Canadian credit score? We do not. Canadian credit means nothing to us. So you're going to pull a tri merge U.S. credit report using all nines for a social and the subject property to see if there's any hits here in the U.S. No. Max LTV yeah. on the hard money. So I'm going to recommend to you that on the last page of our rate sheet will be the hard money uh, schedule. Make 
might be able to look that up while we're talking. Okay, uh, oops, more. Uh, how's the appraisal review process? Is it no more than 10%? We don't have an appraisal. You're required to order your appraisals in my appraisal center for your for your deals. Okay. Um, yes, I, <laughs> I knew we were going to get it. But yes, we'll be sending out a copy of the presentation along with the recording. Um, so just for those people who maybe joined late. Um, and then real quick, uh, so what what do they do if they don't have any U.S. credit? Then you get a bank or reference collateral. letter, a personal bank reference letter that shows they've had a personal bank account for two or more years. Okay. Um, what about collateral? Does it need to be in the U.S.? Yeah. Or All properties need property? to be in the U.S. Okay. A foreign property could be used for evidence of home ownership, though. Okay. A uh, question about the accuracy of DSCR and Quick Pricer. It's correct. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, what it, what, maybe we covered if no score, if there's no credit score, what is the requirement for credit? A bank reference letter. Okay. Can we pay off a construction loan? Investors looking for permanent DSCR financing on a short term rental, 55% LTV after the house is finished. Well, there's a few things here. We need to know when they purchased the property. They're going to need to know how much they paid for it. Uh, the acquisition of the uh, of the property itself. And then they need to know how much they've paid for the construction loan. We're going to add that together. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a little bit of a, of a process for that. Yes, we do. Uh, Lenar, we do Dr. Horton. We do multiples and multiples of uh new construction uh developers reserves for a foreign yeah. national is 12 months anywhere in the world no we do not lend in the u.s virgin islands foreign nationals 12 months reserves anywhere in the world under a million dollars it's three months reserves for a domestic borrower okay. gift amounts but 12 again 12 months reserves anywhere in the world for national okay how about entity okay. docs? If someone chose okay. to set up an LLC. Okay, so if you if you are, yeah, we do, we close in LLCs, we close in corps. And if your borrower's overseas, we, we could use a RON process. They do not have to go to an embassy. Gift funds, foreign nationals. They have, the foreign national has to demonstrate 20% down of their own money of the purchase price sourced and seasoned. And then they're permitted to get a gift from a family member, the standard Fannie Mae gift letter, a copy of the wire going out, and a copy of the wire going into the borrower. Okay. Lots of good questions. Keep them coming, guys. But that's on investor loans. If it's a primary residence, you have to have, uh, generally, if you're doing a bank statement loan, you have to have 5% of your own money sourced and seasoned if you're doing, depending upon the loan to values. But all profit and loss loans and all investor loans require 20% down of the borrower's money. Uh, yes, the presentation will be coming to you via email. Uh, again, we'll, it'll take us about 24 hours to get the video process. So we'll send everything out all at the same time, including the link to AD Studio. Um, did, we covered the gift amount question. Yeah. Uh, is the DSCR your specialty or non-QM in general? Uh, we do a lot. We Again, we are a non-QM lender, but we have really good Fannie rates. So you want to check that out with us. But non-QM is our, our first program that we put out. And we also do Fannie. And we've been pricing our Fannie loans really well, Fannie and FHA. But we're a non-QM lender. Mm -hmm. Let me keep up with all the questions maybe off topic do we do fix and flips no we do not we do not no um you will lend a foreign national and they may sign outside of us but they still need a yep. valid visa yep passport and visa and we have a ron which allows them to open a laptop and they were in the world and close with a uh, notary cam ron okay how about pre-construction condo tells uh they have to be 75 percent pre-sold and you'll have to discuss with your AE which condo tell new construction. Some of them 
are not ready for lending under our guidelines, and many of them are ready for lending. You have to talk to your account executive on a case by case on the new construction condo hotels. Yeah, we'll also we'll be sending out link a link to our webinar center. Mark last year did a a really extensive deep dive webinar with me on condo tells, I think sometime in the the fall. So um, that might be a good uh, webinar for you guys to look back on if, if you're doing a lot of condo tells or interested in cracking into that area. Uh, okay, for four nationals, primary resident, uh, sorry, for primary resident, does it have to be a second home? Um, what is the question? Uh, for foreign national, foreign national, for primary residents, does it have to be second home? It's a question from Ben. Okay. Well, if the question is if the foreign national lives abroad and they're purchasing a property here in the United States, it has to be an investor <laughs> property. Investment only for foreign nationals. Where can we find the 40 states you can sell the DSCR? That's... You can go to my rate sheet, look under the debt service. You could look under super prime in the bottom part where it gives details about uh, the types of loans we do for that for that particular program. Do we allow buy downs on the prepay penalty at a higher rate? Correct. So depending upon the investor program, uh, we allow uh, you to buy down the prepayment penalties. Some lenders require that you can't have more than a three year prepay. We have up to a five year prepay you could go up and down that schedule. Uh, we do the buy downs. I'm trying to find the question. I got the list sure. of the 40 states here that I'm, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll reply to that question. Uh, go. There's the answer for Guy. Okay. I just saw somebody looked at our quick pricer. Yes, our Fannie Mae rates are great. Yeah. Check the quick pricer. Right now, we are pricing for Fannie loans. And we just lowered our non-QM rates by an eighth. So uh, we are, uh, we've are we been lowering our rates weekly on non-QM. So check out on quick pricer. We have great non-QM, DSCR. We have great 12-month bank statement programs. We have great profit and loss programs, asset utilization programs. We have wonderful VOE only programs, no W-2s or pay stubs. Multiple programs available. Check out your account executive for more details. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a question earlier about what the max LTV is on the hard money loans. Uh, it appears to be 70% with great. a high, and that's with a high FICO. Um, so hopefully that will answer that question uh if not again you can go to the website and we've got a whole separate gotcha. section about the hard money loans uh, and we'll mm -hmm. be doing a, a webinar on those middle of the year probably um but don't don't wait until then to, if, you, if you have hard money loans and want to do one now um okay go smart um any ineligible property types like assisted living single room occupancies, log homes, farms. You'll have to check out with your current account executive about what is uh, not usually uh, acceptable. Yeah, I think so single rooms, I you know, some of these things are really, really unusual. We generally do the one to four units. We generally do the single family homes. We generally do a condo. We generally do uh, condo tells, uh, five to eight units things of that nature that's residential but check with your ae for any of the unusual stuff yeah, right. just, there's one suggesting. question about our prepay so we request we think that when your borrowers coming to ad mortgage that they're going to keep that loan if you have borrowers who are considering to flip the loan early ad mortgage would not be the place to send that loan because there's early payoff situations and under and under seven months, six months and under. So uh, if you have a loan like that, I would think twice because if they do something and pay off really super early, there is a possible liability on your on your fact. So think of AD mortgage as a long term lender for your borrower. 
Uh, let's see. Just uh, we did the prepayment question. Has MI pricing improved on Fannie and Freddie? I'm not sure. You don't do a lot of conventional. Well, what I always say is, is that before you submit a Fannie loan, 95% FHA and the like, check out your local, uh, your local MI carriers like MGIC, RMIC, UGIC. Check these places out and get some quotes. Because we don't, we don't require you to use a particular MI company, but if you bringing in a quote. There's opportunity. Okay. Uh, does a two-unit home need to be 100% rentable? What if one unit is rented, the other needs some rehab before rentable? We don't. We don't do rehab loans. Okay. Sir, can the borrower use Bitcoin or crypto for reserve no. requirements? No. Okay. Keep coming, guys. Um, there was a question about the prepayment penalties. I know if you do use Quick Pricer, we've got the states that are involved pre-built in there. So if you have a particular scenario, you can try to run it through Quick Pricer. I think. Looks like we're almost done. Tur uh, turn times. That's always a good one. Okay. So generally... Turn times are, are predicated upon how well you put a file together. AD Mortgage is a full package submission lender. When you submit a loan to us, you should have everything that you need, 90% of what you need to get an underwriting accomplished. The better packaged your loan, the faster you're going to get an underwriter response, the better your response is going to be. And uh, pretty much when you submit a loan on Monday, Disclosures will go out probably the end of Tuesday. Once the disclosures are signed, you could then go on to our appraisal center after it's signed, order the appraisal. Generally, from start to finish, it's a three-week to 30-day process. All right. Can you explain the max cash on hand for David? Okay. If you're referring to cash out, how much you get, we generally allow up to a million dollars cash in hand. when you're doing a cash out loan. Can you pay off a construction loan? Investors looking for, oh wait, we already hit that one. We addressed that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, we're mm -hmm. trying to get rid of the ones we answered as we go along. Um, okay, so keep, again, keep questions coming. If you got any more, if not, we'll head into the home stretch of the wrap up. All right, keep the questions coming. I'll go into my little wrap up spiel here real quick. If uh, all right, so as we kind of, as Mark's indicated quite a bit, I mean, we are completely here to be your partner for growth. Um, and we've done that really through what we're calling our four pillars, um, which is our streamlined loan process. We try to make it as quick and easy for you guys to work with us. Um, we bring with us a team of people who are experts in their field and have a good can-do attitude. Um, so we really want to emphasize that service. And as I mentioned earlier with our backing um, of our securitizer, uh, it gives us the ability to be both flexible in our underwriting, and we also have a very um, deep analytics team who are constantly monitoring sort of the, the market to see what type of loan products we can offer. Um, so that allows us, again, to continue to offer new products, tweak existing mm -hmm. products, um, or sorry, existing loan solutions uh, to help you guys close more business all day long. So um, we're, we're absolutely here to be your partner. Um, we do that also through a, a, our broker educational components. Uh, no, go, go this one. Uh, so the next one that we're gonna be doing is gonna be bank statements. Uh, so we'll do a deep dive on bank statements. It's about uh, 30 days away. Uh, so we try to do one of these sort of loan centered types of webinars once a month um, in addition to some of our specialty topics. Um, so if you go to the next one, the next one we're going to talk about is uh, bridging generations. The idea of this is um, having kind of an open dialogue between borrowers and 
uh, sorry, brokers and borrowers and helping everybody understand, you know, what events or things are that could be impacting them um, or the different life stage they're in, in terms of getting a mortgage. So, you know, if you've got a Gen Z broker who's trying to work with a Gen X borrower, they need to understand that the Gen X borrower is probably focused on trying to, you know, put more equity into retirement or paying for their kids' college, um, you know, different, different aspects like that. So we're, we're finding, we've been finding there's a lot of research showing, especially in the younger generation, obviously, that there's just a lot of misconceptions on things like credit scores and LTVs and how much money they need for down payments. Um, so we're, we're trying to make a very concerted effort to help brokers understand where the borrowers are and, you know, if there are, you know, if there, there are always going to be real barriers preventing um, people from potentially qualifying for a loan, but we want to get past those potential mental hurdles um, that maybe just simply be based on misunderstanding or not, or not being clear on what the housing market looks like. Um, we also try to uh, identify hot housing markets for those people who maybe have, you know, licenses in multiple states and didn't think about a particular area. So Mark's done a few of those um, with us, both um, his blog posts and some videos. Um, so again, broker education is a huge component of what we do here. Um, and again, we do this through our, our webinar schedule we just talked about, but um, we also do, if you're new to us or haven't become a partner yet. Um, every month towards the beginning of the month, we do a broker orientation uh, just to familiarize your, you, uh, eh, familiarize you with all of our loan products, uh, all the services that we offer you, both in terms of broker support, marketing support, uh, broker education. We try to show you on our website where the resources are you may need. Um, so we try to do a pretty thorough job so that once you start working with us, you can hit the ground running. Um, and go from there. Um, so uh, with that, we don't have any further questions. So I want to thank everybody for their time. Again, you'll get the recording in about 24 hours. Um, there'll be a brief survey when you go to check out. So if you can just let us know, you know, either how we did, what we can do to improve things, uh, any special topics that you may want us to explore and do future webinars on. Like I said, we're not always focused on doing products. We're always trying to find ways of, you know, ourselves learning something and also helping to educate the broker community as a whole. Um, so we think this is a big value added service that we provide to our partners. So uh, again, we appreciate everybody taking their time to come out and hear what we have to say. Thank you, Mark, for putting together a great presentation we always appreciate you um, thank you for having me you're welcome and with that we'll close thank out you. our session today so thank you everybody have a great day have a good business take care all right goodbye